Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome back to Satisfactory. This is my bite-sized run, which is aimed at those of you who want to progress through this game without every build taking weeks to complete, but still have an awesome-looking factory. Speaking of awesome-looking factories, I just love the coal build that we did last time around. And today we are going to lay the foundation for a lot of our future progress in such a way that we'll be able to easily scale it up have it really accessible and not take too much time to actually do and that's going to be revolving all around steel production because well if you've played this game for any amount of time you'll probably know there is no such thing as having enough steel so let's get to that so for today's episode you actually have to only unlock one more new item and that is the tier 3 basic steel production that will give us access to the foundry, steel ingots, steel beams, steel pipes, basically anything steel related. But specifically we are going to need the foundry in order to actually automate the production of steel. Now, you might be screaming at me right now, 150 rotors, wasn't that the item that we just spent last episode making lots of them by hand? Well, if you did everything I suggested up to this point, you should not have to handcraft anything else anymore. However, um, there's a few notes on that. So. Let's just jump back to our initial starting facility and if you don't know what I'm talking about it was a few episodes ago so just check the list or the link that I hopefully will remember to include in the description. Um, we should have a huge amount of, well huge amount, at least a decent amount of reinforced iron plates. We stopped the production of smart plating because we disconnected this belt. I recommend that you hook up all your belts now again so you are producing those smart platings once again. And the same holds for this facility that is supposed to be making the modular frames because we disconnected the access to the reinforced iron plates. This is no longer making those frameworks which means we are now running pretty low on frames if we have any of them at all. So we have a total of 12 frames left. We're going to need those for today's episode as well, so make sure you hook everything up. If you don't have enough right now to unlock the basic steel production, don't worry. Just follow along with the next few steps after you made sure that this is all working again. And then by the time you come back, it should all be waiting there for you to unlock whatever you need. Now the first stop in this episode is going to be this coal node over here on the map. It's over here on this little island. I can actually show it to you if I scan for it. There is a pure node on this island. So that's the best type of node there is in the game. And it's actually a little bit hard to reach because it's uh, on an island. So you might be tempted to build a bridge from where we started because we are right next to our starting facility. But I actually recommend that you do not build a bridge from here, but that you do it from over there. You can pretty much build a horizontal bridge without any, uh, well, any problems at all. Just drag out with the zoop function a foundation. Just be careful about these little critters that are running around over here that you might be able to see. They're very, very tiny on the screen right now. Uh, there are several of them over there actually you can see another one running around over here so whenever you go there just make sure you're prepared for a fight just clear them out and remember in this game once you clear out an enemy and you build somewhere next to where it's supposed to be spawning it will actually stop spawning so make sure you start building some foundations when you're at it um i'm gonna do just that and kind of show you the end result of that without going through every step of just building a miner and a platform because i think you know how to do that by now which should look something like this when you're done. Now, I actually think that even though this is a very simple bridge, a very simple facility, it looks really nice if you just take a little bit of time, just a few minutes, to put in some small um, walls. These are the half walls that you have over here. Uh, where's the walls? Not foundations, walls. There we go. Basic wall, just one meter high. Uh, this just makes it look a little bit more intentional than when you just put down the foundations and plop some stuff on top of it. I also worked uh, here and there with some ramps so we don't have uh, rocks sticking through or anything like that at this point. Uh, aside from a few rocks over here in the actual mining facility, uh, once again I do like actually building the miners on top of foundations. just makes it look a lot more clean. Um, but in order to do that you can't make the foundations too high otherwise it won't connect to the actual node so we're going to need to have a few uh, rocks sticking through every now and then but that's not really a problem if that's only in the mining location itself in terms of the rest of the setup we only have well, one miner and one truck station over here 
which makes it really straightforward to make sure we can get this to wherever we need to it to go without having to build huge belt systems without having spaghetti all over the place if you do that fast without having to spend a lot of time making nice looking uh, buses or anything like that nope we're just going to make sure we're trucking everything to our destination now in order to do that we of course do need this bridge so you need to make sure that you don't have steep inclines anywhere so just uh, some ramps here and there do the trick and all in all i really like how this looks i also really like the fact that we are bringing our power directly from our base it's, it's literally two power poles away and we could probably do it in one if we would really want to uh, I just think it looks a little bit more clean to have one in between. But um, yeah, I just like the direct power line from our main facility. So this suits the uh, sorts out the coal. Do make sure that you are using tier 2 belts. Because of course we are producing from a pure node here. Which is 120 items per minute. Which won't fit on a tier 1 belt. Um, and make sure you have a splitter here. That makes sure that there's coal going into the fuel facility of this truck station. As well as into the truck station itself. And of course, without any iron, we're not going to make any steel. So I'm going to use these two nodes over on the east side of my base to make sure we get that. And how do we do that? Something like this. Very simple. Two miners, two Mark 1 belts leading to a merger, leading into a Mark 2 belt. So don't forget to do that because this needs to be a Mark 2 belt to handle 120 ore per minute. Into a truck station. And you might be screaming at your screen right now. Where's the coal? This is not going to be powered by any fuel. Your truck is going to run empty and not do anything. Don't worry, we got that handled. Just hold that thought for a few more minutes. Okay, so here's the plan. We have this nice little open area over here. And for reference on the map, it's over here. As you can see, it's nice and flat. It's also very close to where we are. We have the coal over here. We have the iron that we just uh, put down over here. We have our other coal and uh, facility and our power facility over there. So it's nice and central to where we are currently located. And what we're going to do here is make a hub. Now a hub is not necessarily the same as one of those mega facilities that you've been seeing on other channels maybe. Um, because we're actually trying to keep it small and efficient. But we are trying to centralize a couple of things so that we don't have to move around too much. But we also don't spend too much time bringing stuff from one side of the map to the other or if we are we are going to do it in an efficient way now it's probably going to make more sense over the next few episodes but for now just trust me on this this is actually going to save you a lot of time it's going to be very straightforward to build and like i said it's going to be a major time saver but it's also really fun to build it it won't look like much initially i have to warn you just because we don't really have the means of dressing it up which is something we're going to be working on over the next few episodes as well uh, but as always in the beginning of this game keep it simple keep it small but keep it efficient now um, let me build a couple of things and show you what I mean and there is step one like I said nothing super huge or anything like that you can actually make it a lot larger we might be doing that over the next few episodes but for now let's just stick to what we actually need and have a small little platform to work on now let's set this up in <laughs> Well, in a way that looks a little bit more like a factory, because right now it's not nothing more than a slab of concrete. But we're going to need to feed this the iron and coal that we've been setting up on the other two sides. So the first thing we will need is two truck stops, one for the iron and one from the coal. And we're going to intentionally place these fairly close together and we're going to use two meter ramps so those are the ramps that go down two meter up two meters depending on the direction of course and the reason for that is that these ramps are the ones that the trucks struggle the least with i'm also going to make the truck ramps four foundations wide mostly for aesthetic purposes you can make them too wide that fits um, but the reason i'm doing that is i want the outgoing ports of these truck stations to actually um be aligned with the middle of a foundation like you can see over here uh, and in order to do that and to have things look a little bit nice and neat i will need four foundations to space them out like that so of course on this side we're, we're going to have the coal coming in if i climb up the tower we should be able to see the coal from over here i believe um, well, it's actually just behind this uh, this rock formation, this tree formation. But the, the coal is there, trust me. Um, and the iron is coming uh, somewhere from over there in the corner. 
Now, Bob checked it out, liked it, and is going back to the forest, it seems. But of course, we will need more than just truck stations. Which means that if you haven't done so yet, you are going to have to unlock the basic steel production so we can access to the foundry, we can make some steel ingots, and a lot of other cool steel stuff. Now, you should have more or less enough of these frames and rotors by now if you've been building a little bit faster um, like I have. You might have to be handcrafting on just a couple of them. Shouldn't take you more than a few minutes uh, to fill this up and make sure you unlock this so you can start building. Remember, um, after you've done so, also check what you need to build at least three of these foundries because that's what we're going to build next. So while you're here, you might as well make sure you produce whatever you need and bring whatever you need with you. Now, like I said, the first thing we're going to need is three different foundries. Now, the foundries need two inputs. They need the iron and the coal. Uh, yeah, the iron and the coal. But um, you do want to make sure that wherever you build them, you may, you give yourself enough space. In general, that's a very good advice about playing satisfactory. Just give yourself enough space. You always need a lot more space than you think. But giving yourself a lot of space actually makes sure you can keep your builds tidy. Now, this might not look that tidy at all, but you can see these kind of placeholder roles. We are definitely going to kind of make this look like an actual hub, an actual factory. But for now, we don't really have the means to do so, like I said before. So I'm just using some little placeholder walls. Now, you can actually build these... Um, belts over the walls they the, the half walls actually are low enough that you can put the belts over them uh, but they just get in the way so don't do that but um leave yourself at least one row of foundations behind your truck stations that just gives you the room to make the belts go wherever they need to go uh, maybe even split them off at some point and that is something we're going to need to do as i will show you in a moment but for now um, we're just focusing on the actual inputs. So we have one belt of coal going in here. It's going to go underneath here into this splitter. And then we're going to have the iron here that goes going in the top row. Of course, these things are interconnected in between. And on the other side, just let me hop over to the other side. We have the inputs, one on the bottom and one on the top. Looks very organized. We're going to need three of them. Actually, we only need about two and a half, I believe. But for now, let's just stick with, with three. And keep in mind, we definitely want to scale this up at some point. So uh, that's why we didn't build anything here yet. But we did leave a lot of room here. Because that will make it very trivial to scale this up in the future. Now, um, like I said, we're going to have to do something about the coal and the fuel for the iron line. So let me go fix that and then show you how to arrange that. Now, remember that secondary port that we have on the truck station? We are going to use it. And we are going to use it to lift this fuel up, uh, put it into the splitter, then have it go on this belt and then have it go down here into this lift and into the fuel station of the iron line. That means that by simply having the uh, like the destination of both the coal and the iron truck lines we can just connect one to the other and then have both of those lines fueled without having to resort to something very complicated now remember you only need one of those two truck stations that the truck is going to visit to be fueled because the truck will automatically just pick up, an, up enough fuel to make another trip and then get back here refuel again etc etc now of course this is going to put a little drain on the actual coal facility, the coal going into our iron production or steel production, I should say. But that's not actually going to be a problem this, because this is going to have such a tiny drain that it will not be noticeable. Um, if, of course, like before, like in my previous episode where we did the coal run for the um, power facility, you make sure that your trucks are not driving unnecessarily. So we're going to get to that in a moment, but for now, um, just look at this and admire the simplicity of making sure all your truck stations are fueled now of course this also means that because we now have coal delivered to this this central hub we can easily expand this to have further truck stations that we can simply connect to the, the same line of fuel and those will all automatically be fueled as well and the fuel itself will never be in stop uh, be stopped delivering because of course the coal run itself is being fueled by this coal run itself so that is never ever going to be able to run out of fuel at the same time we also don't limit our throughput here on this belt because of course um, 
we have a secondary output. So as soon as coal is being delivered to this station, 120 coal per minute is going to go on this belt. And of course, 60 coal per minute is going to go on this. But that means that at least when the system is working, it's going to op be operating at fuel's full speed and not be throttled by the lack of coal. And then last but not least, we have the constructor making the steel items that we're going to need to proceed. So we have one constructor making steel pipes. Now that one constructor is only going to need 30 steel per minute and we're actually making 45 in one foundry. So that means the remaining 15 steel ingots per minute are going to go into this merger over here and then going to go into this splitter and then most of that is going to go into this um, constructor making steel beams that actually needs the 60 per minute so you technically do not need this splitter over here the reason i put it in here anyway is because we do want to be upgrading this system at some point and i don't want to have to think about how much steel goes where so um basically that means that we have this splitter over here making sure that it's being combined with a belt that's going to go in here now this um Constructor is actually not going to be operating at full speed because we currently do not have enough coal and iron to actually make use of all these three constructors in total. We are going to be producing a slightly more steel beams than we are going to be producing steel pipes, but we actually do need both of them in order to get some upgrades. Um, at some point, if you feel like you have enough steel pipes, um, then you might as well just disconnect this for a moment and then make use of the fact that all this throughput is going to go actually through the splitter and make sure that you're optimizing the two remaining constructors to the maximum amount that you can. So this is again why I do prefer just having this whole splitter merger setup in here anyway, just in case we want to kind of fill around with what goes where. Now, of course, this is not actually working yet because I haven't set up the truck lines. So let me go and do that. And there we go. We have a functional facility. And all I needed to do that in order to make that happen was making sure we now have trucks driving around, as you can see. Now, I have to say, I really love, love seeing trucks driving around. It just makes the world so much more alive uh, and functional. I mean, we, of course, have critters running around. We have the occasional bob running around not sure where bob went he just ran off at some point but um yeah i just really like those those vehicles driving around now you do not need to you should not forget that's what i was trying to say to make sure that those trucks actually wait at the delivering station for like five or six minutes if you have them driving around continuously uh, you're just burning unnecessary fuel because as you can see it takes quite a while for these um, iron and coal uh, truck stations to actually be completely drained and in the meanwhile it doesn't really make sense for your trucks to drive around so just set them to wait at your truck station for like five or six minutes you can actually have them stay there for a lot longer uh, because basically as long as the truck station that's mining is not overflowing as in getting backed up um, you're not losing any production just having the trucks uh, standing still until that happens but of course since we actually do want our production to start pretty early on and we don't want to have to wait for a truck station to fill up first uh, having them drive around every five minutes or so should pretty much make sure you're producing non-stop right from the get-go especially considering we've built the, the mining stations first so they were already filling up before we actually connected them to the outputs and that just means that we had a little buffer to to work from now i of course also added in two storage units so we actually have somewhere to get all that production going um, this is not even close to a large functional hub just yet that is something we will be working on in the next few episodes i hope you enjoyed this one it should only take you a couple of hours to set all of this up including the mining stations including the truck routes um, and that is not that much for a brand new uh, or actually two new types of production if you don't count these steel ingots because if you do it would actually be three new kinds of production. Um, we will definitely need more than this but that's something we'll be working on somewhere in the future but for now this is actually using up a completely pure coal node so that's pretty much all we can do for now. I hope you enjoyed this one make sure you join me in the next few episodes where we're going to be expanding this hub making sure we also get some sinks going and basically a lot of other fun stuff if you're still here you're awesome and i hope i catch you in the next one